You're listening to Stimulus Tech Talk, a conversation-based podcast created by Stimulus Technologies that covers a range of topics related to business and technology. Welcome to Stimulus Tech Talk. I'm Sherry Lip, the Marketing Manager at Stimulus Technologies, and I am here today with Stimulus Technology CEO Nathan Whitaker, and we are going to be talking about why you should do a digital self-assessment for your business. Hello, Nathan. Hi, Sherry. It's great to be here. So this is a good topic because we usually talk about all the things that we do, but this is something uh, business owners can do for themselves. Uh, So can you explain what a digital self-assessment is? Well, I'll uh, kind of just talk about what a self-assessment is first and kind of lead into the digital self-assessment. So I'm obviously, as you can see from behind me, I am I love reading business books. And one of my favorite things when I read a business book is if they include an assessment. And, you know, I think about like uh, a book like Traction, um, which defines the EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System. Uh you know, part of that book is uh, to take an assessment on where you're at in your business. And, you know, it's just, it's a questionnaire that asks you to rate yourself in different areas of running a business in in that book. Or, you know, if you're reading a self-help book, it might be, you know, on where you're at with financial or your, you know, personal endurance or whatever it may be. And I like the assessments because it makes you think about, uh, different topics and where you're at. And usually you have to rate yourself, you know, one to three, one to five, um, you know, some type of range on where you're at in those different areas. Um, so when I wrote the CEO's Digital Survival Guide, uh, because I love assessments so much, self assessment so much, I included at the beginning uh, of the book and in every chapter uh, different questions so that you can assess um, with yourself or with your team on where you are at in this digital life cycle of your business. So it's just a, it's an introspective um, questionnaire to get you to think a little bit more uh, about where your business is at so that you can make changes as you go forward. And so what are some common pitfalls that business owners might discover when they're doing this assessment? And why, you know, why should they, how can addressing them help? Well, you know, usually in whatever uh, assessment that you're doing or book that you're reading, you realize that you may have a problem uh, inside your business or some type of pain that you're experiencing, and you're attempting to alleviate that pain by making a change. And uh, part of the problem, though, is, is, you know, a lot of companies and, and owners think that, one, they, you know, are doing just fine. Uh, in in different areas, but they realize that they may need to do something differently, but they don't know exactly what it is. But just assuming that somebody else is going to take care of it inside their organization, I think that's probably the number one pitfall is um, kind of thinking that it's somebody else's responsibility or it's already taken care of. Um, So I think that's the first pitfall. Another pitfall is maybe just not having the knowledge uh, to answer the questions or knowledge about different areas. Uh, So, you know, taking an assessment on, you know, the digital aspects of your company, uh, cybersecurity, digital processes, um, IT infrastructure, things like that. Uh, you know, there may be terms or concepts or things that are foreign. So you you might, you know, maybe talking about uh, social engineering and maybe you've heard that term, but don't know exactly what it means. And so if I ask you a question, you know, are, are your employees trained to spot social engineering attacks on your organization? You might say, well, I don't quite know what that means. Um, and so that's probably another pitfall is just not, you know, understanding the concept and just thinking that it's taken care of or your team is, is aware of it. So I think those are the two big ones, just, you know, assuming that everything's OK or number two, just not understanding all the aspects. And, you know, whether you're reading a book like Traction and, and working on the entire operating system of your business, how you operate, um, you know, it is going to identify different areas um, 
you know, from that concept of your entire business or from, you know, my book's concept of your digital infrastructure. So that's, that's the advantage of doing a self-assessment because you can pinpoint what things you need to work on. And so what do you think, um, how do, how does when you, you make these self discoveries, discoveries for their business, how does it help them drive their future decisions? So I, I think whether it's, you know, the book or the, um, the CEO digital survival guide with your digital assessment or whatever assessment that you do. Um, I, I think focusing on the areas that uh, you have the lowest score in identifies the things you need to work on first. So, you know, if you overall rate yourself, um, let's say on a one to five scale, if you rate yourself fours or fives on most things, but you have something that's a one or a two, um, either because you don't understand the concept or realize that you need to make a change there or an improvement, um, that helps you identify what areas to focus on. So that's the big advantage of the self-assessment is it really helps yourself um, come to the realization of what, what areas of the business you need to focus on of improving. Um, so for businesses, you know, there's different types of business owners, the tech oriented, the non tech oriented, digital and non digital. So how do you think of self self assessment would be different for each of those types of business owners? You know, it's it's interesting. So, you know, my wife helped proofread my book and she's a small business owner, a solo entrepreneur. And, you know, some of the concepts in the book, you know, speaking of employees and and you know, dealing with different staff and, and maybe remote work, things like that, um, didn't apply to her directly. But a lot of it, um, you know, did apply to even a solo entrepreneur um, that they could uh, they can make a changes in their process. I, I remember one she said specifically, she's like, you know, I realized that um, I had a lot of uh, files that were quite old they might have had some personally identifiable information and I had just copied them from computer to computer and I realized that, you know, hey, I needed to just, you know, make sure that I have good digital hygiene and clean those, clean those out. And, and then the other thing is, is, um, you know, ensuring that all the versions of the files are current. Um, and so she identified a couple of things that, uh, you know, she could make a change in her business, you know, whether it's, you know, just digital hygiene of it, file storage, you know, back ensuring backups are done correctly, um, the right antivirus on the system. You know, there are things that even a, a small solo entrepreneur can take away from the digital assessment that's in the CEO's digital survival guide, uh, because it it does make a difference for anybody, um, it, you know, any business owner. And then, you know, it does scale up to you know large enterprise organizations uh, that are looking to implement better cybersecurity or better processes inside their organization. Maybe there's a compliance part of it that they're missing. Um, in, in the one that I created, it, it does cover all aspects of that. So there might be parts that you just have to eliminate because maybe they don't affect you directly, but there's other parts that are certainly um, applied to even uh, to all businesses. So you're suggesting even if somebody considers themselves, uh, you know, have a robust digital system in place, I mean, you yourself would take a, a digital self-assessment. Yeah, you know, and things change constantly. Um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe something has come up or uh, you've heard a trend or something like that. And it might knock your score down because you might not be doing as much in a certain area. Uh, when I wrote the book a few years ago, generative AI, which we've talked a lot about on the podcast, um, wasn't available to the masses. And so that's something to look at is, you know, there's a question in there, are you looking at all the latest technologies out there and putting uh, forward business plans to make sure that you're implementing these latest technologies? And so you might have been good a year or two ago, but are you, you know, forward looking constantly to see what kind of technologies are available out there and then driving your team to implement those new technologies. So it might've been a, you know, a three out of three on, on the scale of how I do it in the book. Uh, you know, two years ago, you might've had, you know, all the systems implemented, the latest ERP system, the latest, uh, you know, business processes, CRMs, all that in place. And then suddenly 
you know, this new technology generative AI comes out and it's a game changer in the industry. And now you might be a one because you haven't done anything about it yet. So, you know, taking those periodically uh, is really helpful uh, to ensure that you're constantly up to date uh, and thinking about not just specific products, because the questions in there aren't like, have you implemented, you know, this product specifically? It's, it's thinking, future thinking about um, where your organization is in comparison to the technologies that are available today. And so uh, how, how often do you think with this, how rapidly things change, how often do you think businesses should do this? And does that vary by industry? I think once a year is a good opportunity to review where you're at. Uh, I, I'm going to go back to the EOS uh, system of running a business. Uh, you know, they talk in there about it having a, you know, leadership annual review, you know, multi-day uh, annual review of your company. Uh, and then the quarterly reviews uh, to set quarterly goals. Uh, I think the annual review is a good time to, you know, take an overall assessment of where you're at and then look to implement new technologies throughout the year and then have, you know, smaller goals quarterly. So uh, this is something that you can go through, you know, if you're a stimulus technologies customer, we'd be happy to take you through this assessment um, with one of your technology uh, business representatives. Um, uh, in in one of your quarterly meetings with us, or you know, if you if you want to set up some time, we'd be happy to take you and your leadership team through it um, with one of our sales representatives to you know better understand where you're where you're at. But I think annually is a good uh, good goal you know good goal to have to do these reviews. So you know, a lot of leadership teams you know might have um, you know the CEO, the CFO maybe an operations manager, but leaving out, you know, the IT professional from these leadership discussions. And I, uh, in the book, I really talk about bringing uh, the IT team in. Um, if you don't have a CIO, um, you need to bring, you know, your IT um, representative in to have those discussions of what technologies are available and what things you need to do to, you know, plan a budget for the following year. And have you seen, do you have um, an experience, an example of where you've seen somebody put this into practice, the assessment and make changes, the beneficial changes for their business? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, our customers that are doing this regularly um, that we work with that are meeting with their um, technical account managers to have these reviews are ex you know, are accelerating in the marketplace. Um, I think of a CPA firm that we work with uh, that, you know, grew from uh, like three employees to over 50 now because they were implementing the right technologies. They were able to, because of the technologies they were implementing, attract larger customers and it grew their firm quite rapidly and they were able to do it, um, you know, with the right technologies um, have a lot of efficiencies and be able to use those efficiencies uh, to drive uh, growth and good productivity. So um, I, I, we have a lot of customers like that. And I'm just very excited when a customer is, you know, really taking on that, you know, understanding that review and implementing the right technologies because they are, are doing that. And so what should the company do if they take this self-assessment and they're scoring a lot of ones on their version <laughs> get started? <laughs> Well, you know, uh, talk to their uh, IT team, um, you know, certainly if it's us then you know, we need to work on uh, those improvements. Uh, if it's not, you know, we, we be happy to have that discussion with you about what you can do to better improve that your technology inside your company and, and improve that journey that you're on uh, to business excellence. And because technology, as we've talked about a ton in this podcast, Technology really drives uh, productivity. It drives, you know, automation. It drives um, leadership in your uh, in your industry. Uh, technology really makes business run today. So it's important to stay on top of it so that you're constantly, um, you know, beating your competition and and acquiring the customers that you really want to because you're, you know, you're providing the type of service and responsiveness and uh, pricing and everything that you want to inside your company moving forward. 
And last question, um, if somebody wants to use your book as their guide, what can you remind the full title and where to get it? So it's the digital survival, the CEO's digital survival guide. It's available on amazon.com. Um, if you visit uh, nathanwhitaker.com, I actually have an assessment that you can uh, get on there. Um, it's, a it's a digital version of the digital assessment, of the cyber score assessment, as we call it in the book. Um, and I will also, anybody that would like a uh, copy of the book, I will offer three physical copies of the book. If you go onto LinkedIn, connect with me and just send me a message that you'd like a copy of the book. Um, be happy to send it to the first three that, uh, that jump on there and do that. So uh, please, uh, you know, uh, jump in there and, and take a look on LinkedIn. We'd be happy to make that uh, connection with you and send you a copy of the book. All right. Well, great offer and great reward for people who have listened to this entire episode. And if you are listening, don't forget to subscribe and like and leave us a comment because we always like to get our, the feedback so we know that you're enjoying our, what we're putting out. Yeah, thanks, everybody. And thanks, Sherry, for the great questions. And uh, I, I wish you guys all well on your digital journey. And hopefully taking the assessment is a good first step to a profitable rest of 2024 and into 2025 as you're planning out your business success. We'll